a bionic man complete with artificial organs, synthetic blood and robotic limbs has gone on display at the Science Museum in London. Costing some 600,000 euros, he's expensive but not as pricey as the six million dollar man of the cult 1970s TV series. The man, who's apparently called Rex, can sense objects in front of him with retinal implants and cochlear implants allow him to hear. The producers of a British television program got in touch with Dr. Bertolt Meyer, a scientist from Zurich University, and Rex was built by a team of leading robotics experts. One of my personal favourites is the artificial blood that runs through these tubings, and because this is made of nanoparticles that are able to bind oxygen and give them off, just like real blood can do. But this is not a real blood, this is nanoparticles. Mm. And I thought that was absolutely science fiction, so I thought that was very, very impressive. Also the fact that they're very close to an implantable artificial kidney that will actually be able to replace a failing kidney without the necessity of a kidney transplant. Mm. Now think of the great benefits some technology like that would bring. I knew fairly much about prosthetic limbs, apparently, but what we can't, what, well, what we're close to accomplishing in terms of artificial organs, I find is absolutely mindful. Rex incorporates some of the latest advances in mechanical limbs as well as a heart and lungs, an artificial pancreas, kidney, spleen and trachea, and a functional blood circulatory system. All of his components could theoretically be welded to a human body to replace missing or worn out parts. <laughs> Meanwhile, Matteo Bovmont lost his hand to illness a few years ago and has now become the first Dane to be fitted with one of the world's most advanced artificial hands. The device is controlled by electrodes which are located next to the muscles you normally use to open or close your hand. I couldn't do this before. Not at all. I didn't have any support to hold the tape roll. So I couldn't do it. Instead, I had to get other people to do it for me. The freedom, the value you actually get out of it yourself is absolutely priceless. It can't be surpassed. The hand can move all the fingers and grip in seven different ways. Matteo's able to use it for fine motor skills like pegging, washing, just as he would normally have done. It's a great example of how we can give someone some quality of life, but it also means he won't need us as a municipality to come and deliver all sorts of services, which aren't cheap. So it's in the best interest of the person. It means Matteo can be much more independent than before. Going for dinner, even just for lunch at a restaurant with my friends was embarrassing. To sit and ask your friend, Will you cut up my steak? That's really embarrassing, I have to say. <laughs> he's still learning how to operate the hand. For instance, it's difficult to judge how much pressure he's putting on things or how hard he's squeezing, but he's confident that practice will make perfect. <laughs>